Um, so what is your favorite song on Steven Universe and what do you think Connie's favorite song would be if she knew like Ooh. of all of the songs? <laughs> hmm. Think about that. Um, hmm. I mean, Stronger Than You is probably my favorite song. And I mean, I'm trying to think of all of the songs. I think Connie's a little too humble to have um, Do It For Her be her favorite song. Um, huh. Um, I, I, think, I think Connie would like Stronger Than You as well, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Garnet slash Estelle. Come on. <laughs> Hello. Hey, hey. Um, I was wondering if you've seen the pilot, and if you have, I wanted to know what you thought of how the show progressed from uh, the pilot to what it is now. I remember watching the pilot, um, oh, towards the very beginning of when the show started airing, um, because I remember like looking up stuff about the show and um, hearing people like, oh, they changed the art style, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I mean... Definitely, I, I had no idea getting into the show how the show would progress. Like, I mean, it got so heartfelt. Like, I mean, at first, like, I didn't really realize what I was getting myself into. Like, I will watch the show and just be bawling my eyes out at certain points. Like, because, like, I don't know everything that's going on unless I'm, like, unless I was in the episode that I'm watching. So if Connie's not in an episode, I don't know any, I, like, I'm just watching it as if I'm one of you guys. And so if something really deep happens, I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I just love getting to see how the show um, has moved forward. And like, I think even the fans as well have gotten, um, I mean, the pilot like doesn't really give away. I, I mean, if I remember correctly, it doesn't like, <sighs> I don't know. I, it's just awesome to like, see how Rebecca Sugar's vision has been executed and you can see today like how deep and thought out everything is. Thank you. Okay, um, I wanted to know what your favorite fusion was as well as um, what do you, like, what do you want to happen to Jasper? Like, not what you think's going to happen, or like, not what you know is going to happen if they've told you anything, but what you as a person want to happen. Huh, okay. Um, so, first I'll start off with favorite fusion. Um, I really like Opal. Um, I mean, a part of me was like, haha, Stevani, obviously. But, um, <laughs> um, Op Opal's my like birth month stone, so I was automatically like, ooh. Opal, and then <laughs> I really like Amy Mann also. So just like all, all sorts of things combined. And I think the whole story arc of how um, Pearl and Amethyst like can come together despite their fundamental differences in personality and like, I don't know, I just, I, I thought that was really nice. And as far as Jasper is concerned, um, I mean, I feel like a part of me um, deep down like if I was if I was to put myself like completely out of the loop and like completely like th like if I was just like watching the show along with everyone, I mean, oh, it, it's hard because a part of me would be like, oh, it would be so nice if like what's happening with like Peridot is like Peridot becomes close to the gems, like if that if something like that could happen, but like it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I can't, I'm not gonna say anything else on that. <laughs> well, so um, first off, I wanna tell you that the fusion thing just reminded me of it. Um, some of the, <laughs> do it, do it. that wasn't what I was gonna say, what I was gonna What's say up? <laughs> is, is, is that um, some of the others said Stevani was their favorite, but what Look, they- all said Stevani was their favorite. Really? They yeah. Said, um, oh, then it was like immediately after that Stevani. <laughs> but um, I think what they want me to do, so the last three panels we went to, the last oh three Steven Universe panels we went to, we had them all imitate Amethyst's favorite fusion dance, which um, Michaela did first and involves the stanky leg. 
I, I remember specifically telling someone to ask Dee Dee to do the stanky leg, and I feel like I brought this upon myself. <laughs> oh, can I can I like watch it first for inspiration? <laughs> Okay, okay, cool. And, um, yeah, yeah, I, I would actually. Come in, come close. All right. All right, I'll, I'll just watch one because I don't want to take too much time away from other people who want to watch. Uh, yes, I do. Because <laughs> I never got to see it. I just told someone to ask Dee Dee because I thought it would be funny. Oh, that's Oh, well, Shelby, Shelby's such an amazing dancer. She actually used to teach dance classes at my high school, which is a really weird, like, twist of fate. Like, no, we were talking about it. And, I, and she was like, oh, wait, where did you go to high school? And I, like, told her where, because I went to a performing arts high school in L.A. And she was just like, oh, I taught some master classes there. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that's, no, that's Dee Dee. Oh, I was trying to remember. Oh, there we go. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. So I have to. I have to like step back a little bit here, and um, I don't. I, I. I want you guys to know that I don't know how to dance. Like I'm re I'm really bad. I'm a really bad dancer. Um, so it's kind of like so like. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> Okay, um, if it's all right, I did have an actual question. I yeah, go for it. <laughs> so um, I was wondering, how, how does it feel knowing Connie is like a character that is inspiring to, to like um, young girls, like a really great strong female character? It makes me really, really proud because I mean, for me, um, that strong character was um, Hermione from Harry Potter. Yes. Um, uh, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, and um, just like knowing that I can like carry on. I mean, like, because knowing how that feels to have like such an inspirational character, and so I can like kind of imagine what it, like, and I, I I don't know. I it's such an honor because like sometimes I forget that I'm in this position until I'm put in situations like this, like being at a convention. Because I'm a full-time college student. I went to high school in, like a public high school for four years. So I like try to keep my like professional life and like my like social life separate. But I, I when I like meet like at, at conventions when like young children come up to me and tell me how much that my character means to them or like, or if their like parents come up to me and say that like their their kid like I'm their favorite character it just it it makes me almost like glow with happiness because it's just like such an honor to be a part of someone's childhood because that's such a formative experience in their life and they're and it's so crazy to think that even tw like 20 years from now like this is never something that's going to go away like if I am important in a child's life like years from now when they're an adult I'll find like they'll come to me and say like oh you were that important and it's just like it's so mind-blowing to think that I'm I'm 18 years old and the fact that I can be doing this and have this opportunity is just ah oh. <laughs> I'm like there are no words there are no words to describe the honor that I feel like I have well thank you hi um I do have a question are there any scenes that may have been cut from the show that you would have wished would have been kept with Connie that you um, know of? I actually, I actually have no idea. Usually, um, I can't think of any scenes um, that were cut. Um, usually, when we're recording, we'll have like alts. Um, so if one, so there might be like two or three alternate versions of a line. Um, and sometimes like when I'm watching an episode back, I'll be like, oh, I thought the alt was funnier or like, oh, they went with the alt. I like the original better, like stuff like that. But usually, I mean, it, there's such a long gap between when we record episodes and when they actually air. Um, so most of the time I don't really remember the word for word, um, a uh, difference between uh, what ends up on the show. And in, what was it, Stephen's birthday? Um, the rec more recent one. Yeah, in Stephen's birthday, Connie's sort of 
fear about Stephen aging as such. How, how do you feel about that as the voice actor? How do you feel about that? I mean, I, I, I thought it was, um, I, I mean, I think it's really interesting um, in general, um, the kind of bond that um, Connie and Greg have over being the like humans in um, Stephen's life. And I, I think it's interesting. I mean, I, I think it's, I mean, that episode was really um interesting to me because it does shine a little bit like it raises questions over oh how is Steven going to age being half gem and half human and I think Connie Con I mean the thing is Connie is such a supportive friend like even when Steven turns back into um, like Baby. an embryo basically like um, she's going to stand by him no matter what it doesn't matter what age Steven is Connie just cares so much about Steven mm -hmm and like wants to be there for him, no matter what. And I think that's so important. Yeah, I think that's a good thing for people to understand too. Probably why kids like, the sh why con kids like Connie so much. I mean, I think Connie's just such a pure individual. And it, I mean, <laughs> she's just like, oh, like the sweetest, the sweetest character. And like, I am again, honored to play her and be, and to be able to like, be the voice behind her. I mean, the writers on the show are incredible. I think that's like they have such a great way of char building character. I mean, all of the show, all of the characters on Steven Universe are so three dimensional, and I think that's so important. Also, to have characters that you see that aren't purely good or all the time, or like, like, or just completely evil through and through, like. It, it sh it's important to see that individuals have flaws and strengths, and yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering, if Connie had a feature song just by herself, what do you think it would be about? Huh, um, that's a good question. Um, I feel like Connie might, I mean, hmm. I feel like, I mean, if I was in control of that scenario, I feel like maybe maybe about her p relationship with her parents, maybe. I feel like that would make sense. Okay, thank you. Hello, Hello. again. Hey. Um, <coughs> God. Um, I was wondering. Oh, damn it. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, uh, I was wondering how you got into voice acting in the first place. Um, well, I had the great, really, really great fortune of being born and raised in Los Angeles. Like, I, I got into voice acting when I was four years old, or acting in general, and then I think, I think voice acting came along maybe when I was five or six. Um, and so what happened was I kind of stumbled into it, and when you're a little kid, I feel like it's most important that you are able to carry yourself with a, like you, you're able to be, you're mature and you can read and enunciate and people can understand what you're saying because if you have a cute voice, that's basically all there is to it. And then I got my foot in the door and it just kind of carried on and I was granted with these opportunities. But that's not the same for everyone, obviously. I mean, of course I feel extremely lucky and it feels like a coincidence because honestly like some of my first memories are like of auditions and stuff like that whereas like some of uh, the voice actors here and voice actors in general get started really late I mean there's no one size fits all to um, there's no one size fits all way to get into voiceover I mean I'm so privileged and lucky to be able to have gotten into it the way I did because for a while I didn't really see voiceover as like like a career it was just kind of like something I'd been doing for all of my the life I could remember <laughs> which is very strange and not normal by any means <laughs> I was also wondering if you had any more like a uh, a voiceover plans down the line I mean, obviously, I, I, I love this job so much, and I hope I get to do it for a very 
long time and uh, voiceover in general has just become a passion of mine and working on this show has helped has made me a lot more passionate about voiceover getting to see the the fan reception and um the emotional impact that a cartoon can have in the same because i i feel like steven universe um has an emotional pull an emotional draw that a lot of other cartoons don't really go into um, or like try to pull that kind of emotion out of the viewer. And um, it, it's really, it helped, it's helping me, um, or it's helped me um, realize that like voiceover is just as much of like a craft as on camera acting and like traditional drama. So it's, it's really cool. And I hope I get to do this for like the rest of my life. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Oh, <laughs> hi there. <laughs> oh, you can do it. Come on. Go. Go. All right. Okay. Are you sure? Oh. Uh, she's too shy. Um, she just wanted to know how much of Connie is in you. Oh, um, I, I really, I really relate to Connie in a lot of ways. Um, I think. I think when I was Connie's age, 12 and three quarters, um, uh, I, I, I think a lot of Connie's development as a person kind of almost mirrors my own innocence. Um, I was homeschooled because of the fact that I it was involved in acting for such a young, from such a young age. And um, I, I do feel like in some ways I was kind of sheltered as a child. And I think that as I've gotten older, I've kind of, come out of my shell and become a lot more openly passionate about what I am passionate about. And I, I think that, I mean, I've always been an avid reader and um, a bit of a nerd <laughs> um, and a dork. Or, and I, I think that it, it's really nice being able to kind of use that, those past feelings and past... Um, like, I mean, if you look at the very first episode that Connie appears in, Bubble Buddies, I, I feel like a lot of her emotions about um, kind of being alone, um, I, I could, I mean, I think, I, I, I definitely think in some ways, like, and like it, using negative emotions, like, of my own to kind of inform the way I perform Connie is really cool because I, I, I don't know, I just love the way that she's written and um, I think part of the reason that Connie is so appreciated is because she kind of, it's so easy to relate to her and I, I, I love that about her because she's kind of a, a slate that you can put your own experiences in, like you can channel your experiences through hers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just checking if anything just to make sure that uh, can you hear me? yeah I can hear you well just two things uh, seeing as how you're the literally the first person to see the script the moment that it's like dawned on you and then you do the whole recording how was what did you feel like when you found when you saw when you read it that Stephen and Connie fuse like their first fusion <laughs> the first, first thing time. I thought was that's possible <laughs> um <laughs> And then I was like, oh my God, Stavani's gonna be played by AJ Mashaka. Ali and AJ was my first concert. <laughs> um, and then, um, so that was really exciting. And um, so yeah, surprise and shock and like confusion. I was like, so what does this mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I really was excited to find out because I was like, I mean, I'm, I watched the show, so I was very, um, I, excited to see what um, future um, plot lines that um, Stevani could, un, um, could open up. Well, that's great. That was a great reaction. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> or, no, I mean, that's not, whatever. Fine, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> Everybody knows you're fine, all right. But uh, second question, do you think in the future, just as a prediction for yourself, do you think that Stevani... Uh, Stephen and, Steven and Connie's fusion will ever be put in a scenario where they actually fight together? I mean, as, a, as the fusion. I mean, 
Oh. We're very far ahead in um, the recordings, as well, so I can't really like well, describe the, what's it. going to happen. But I mean, um, I definitely think that everything that Steven Universe um, reveals on the show, um, kind of it, everything's really thoughtfully planned out, and there are a lot of. I mean, if you look at like fan theories, I mean, the fans predicted that Garnet was a fusion before, like way before Jailbreak. So I mean, there there are it's easy to find like I mean if you if you really watch the show, I mean, Rebecca Sugar is so brilliant. <laughs> she she has created this rich and nuanced world that the characters live in. And um, I think, mm, I mean, it's, it's, I'm trying, I'm trying to articulate what I, what I want to say without. Well, you could say I bet. You could say I bet and I'll just like completely, completely cut it off. (laughs) I mean, yeah. It goes either way. It it could go either way. Yeah. Now, third and final, uh, Hope this doesn't offend offend anybody, but uh, do you happen to know about Game Grumps by any chance? Oh, oh I know, I know yeah. Game I know Game Grumps, yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, well, last question, so thanks for answering, all right? Cool. And have a good day, that's both That's a of good you. last question. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was a pop quiz. <laughs> yeah, I know. Are they watching? What's going on? Uh, oh, I like your hello? cosplay, hello. by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay. Um... <laughs> Hi. Okay. So my question is like, um, it's about Steven and Connie. How how do you feel about like their development together? And if you think like they could become more than just friends or like friends or like how do you feel about their connection? I mean, as revealed in Steven's birthday, Connie is only twelve and three quarters, so I think it's a little <laughs> early for her to be um, involved in any romantic relationships. Um, but I. I think the friendship between Stephen and Connie is so important, and it reminds me of the my first really close friendship with someone. And I think it's just so pure and nice, and it's just so it's so beautiful to watch because it's so honest. And it remind it like I feel like it's just such a real portrayal of what it's like to have such a like a good childhood friend. And I I love watching it because it just really reminds me of being a kid again, watching, like, their, like, simple interactions, like, sharing a juice box or, like, just, m- like, making s'mores together or stuff like that. Like, it's just so innocent. And 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 they, the love that they have for one another is so g- genuine and unmuddled by complicated emotions that come up when you're an adolescent. Oh. So. And second question... Um, how is it like working with Rebecca Sugar and like all the other cast members, like your interaction between them? I, I love working on this show. Like I cannot emphasize that enough. I feel like the cast is such a family. I, I, I mean, I feel like I've said this to a lot of people who've come up to me at my um, little booth, but I mean, Zach and I are really good friends in real life. Like we'll go get coffee together after we record an episode sometimes or, um, and Michaela Amethyst is like a cool older sister to me and Dee Dee is like a mom to me as well. I mean, really like, <laughs> oh, funny story. Um, Zach told me once that one time he saw Dee Dee scolding um, her kids and she sounded exactly like Pearl. <laughs> um, uh, so like bird mom IRL. Um, <laughs> um, but no, yeah. And I, I mean, Rebecca Sugar, so sweet, and I, I mean, even um, all the people behind the scenes. I mean, Ken Osborne um, is one of the funniest people, and I, I just love like even going in there. Like, if I'm the first one to show up to a record, I'll just kind of be sitting in like the waiting area before we go into the booth, and I'm like, when are my friends gonna get here? Like, <laughs> I want to ask about how how their life has been in the past like few weeks. Like, it's just a blast. <laughs> oh, thank you. We have a lot of laughs. Hi again. Um, I have two questions, and the first one is: If Connie was a gem, what would her superpower be? Ooh. Um, hmm. Let's think about that for a second, Grace. Um, I feel like 
I mean, Connie's very smart, so I feel like it would have to do with her mind. Maybe she'd be able to read minds. That'd be awesome. That would be cool. Awesome. Yeah. And my second question is, cause, because you've done so much voice work before, what has been like your favorite role besides Connie that you've done in the past? Favorite role besides Connie? Um, I played Lucy in Happiness is a Warm Blanket, Charlie Brown. Um, oh, I want to say when I was like 11 or 12. And that was another really fun, momentous project in my life where I was like, wow, I'm actually doing this. And um, just being able to be a part of the Charlie Brown family and like the Charlie Brown like legacy, I mean, that is um, a franchise that has been so iconic for so many years and just being able to be a part of that, even for like, even just briefly, um, it was very exciting to me. And it was kind of like the first time where, the very first time, like, because at, at that point, that was when I was starting to realize like, okay, I like, I do voiceover. Like I'm like, I'm not like, I'm a kid, but I'm working, like I have a job. And that was when I started to like really put it in perspective, I feel like. And so that was just a very exciting um, time. And like I was having a lot of realizations just getting, be being able to play Lucy in Charlie yes. Brown. Thank you. And thanks for coming to Supercon, by the oh, way. Oh, it's really a blast. It. <laughs> I love hanging out and talking with all you guys. Hello. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask, um, what's, how is your relationship between you and um, Zach? Um, we're really good friends. Um, I really enjoy recording. I mean, we've known each other since um, I think we were both 15. And um, I actually got to hang out with him on his 18th birthday at Animate Miami, um, the, last, the last convention I went to and also the first convention I went to. Um, and so, I mean, we get along really well. And I feel like in a lot of ways, we had a very similar childhood because of both growing up as... Um, actors in Los Angeles and but at the same time like I feel like we're both pretty level-headed about what we do I mean especially for me I'm very conscious of the fact that um, I'm in a very special position that I don't take it for granted at all I'm very aware of the fact that one day like this may not be my life anymore and I want to cherish every moment that I have these opportunities and I I love I mean, Zach and I, like, we can, we, we just, like, chat, and it's fun. I mean, like, we just catch up on each other's lives when we're hanging out and stuff. It's cool. He's a good friend. Thank you. Hi. 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 Oh, oh are you okay? Hi. I just wanted to know what are some of your hobbies? Oh, um... Let's see. I, I feel like I'm going to start sounding like I'm on like an online dating profile. Like, I like long romantic walks on the beach. Um, <laughs> um, I am a musician. I play guitar, bass, and a little bit of piano. Um, I am a full-time college student, so um, I love hanging out with my friends. I just got out of living in the dorms. Yes. Um, um, and um, let me think. Um, I love, I, I really like driving. If That's kind of weird, I feel like, especially in LA, because all of the drivers are terrible. But I really like just like putting on my music and just cruising around. Um, yeah, uh, I'm like trying to think of other things I do and I feel like I'm sounding pretty boring right now. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, huh. Um, I, I watch a lot of TV as well. Couch potato. <laughs> Woo! Thank, thank you. All right, hi. hi. Um, did you originally audition for The Voice of Connie? Yeah, um, I'm actually, um, it's, a, it's a little confusing, I think. Um, there was there. I think there was someone else who played Connie before me, but um, there was um, a conflict. And it, it, I because the first episode I did um, I recorded was actually Lion to the movie, and I ended up going back and doing Bubble Buddies later. Um, but um, yeah, I did uh, I did audition for the voice of Connie originally, um, and um, 
it was really exciting because I remember just seeing the lines and being like, ooh, I hope I get this. Like, <laughs> the, in, like the lines that um, I had to read for the audition were so well written. I was like, ooh, I like this. This is funny. Um, and then, like, finding out two weeks later um, that I got the role was, like, super exciting. I freaked out a lot. I think I screamed. Um, like, my, I think my mom was like, like, oh, Grace, like, check your voicemail. Like, you got a call from your manager. And I was like, okay. And then I think my mom just, like, hears, like, ah, like, from downstairs. And she's just like, are you okay? <laughs> um, but also, um, before um, Steven Universe, I was, I mean, presently as well, I was a huge fan of Adventure Time. And Rebecca Sugar's... <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I was a huge fan of Adventure Time and specifically um, Rebecca Sugar's work, um, songwriting on the show. I remember like way before I auditioned for um, Steven Universe, like I used to like take my guitar and like learn like, Daddy, why did you eat my fries? Or like, <laughs> I'm not your problem because I was obsessed with Marceline. Also, like the first time I met Olivia Olsen, I kind of fangirled. Aww like low key <laughs> um, but um, so yeah so when I found out because I when I auditioned originally I, I didn't realize that Rebecca Sugar was the creator of Steven Universe so when I found that out like after I got the role like that was just like a double whammy like oh man <laughs> Grace Rolex was uh, off her rocker a little bit like freaking out <laughs> oh my God. Oh, thank you <laughs> There. Hi. I, I have two questions. Um, the first one is, what's it like being on college, being the voice of Connie? Because I know there's a huge uh, college student fan base as well. I'm, I'm in college and I love it. Um, it's really funny. Um, so I try to be, um, I, I'm, I'm kind of not close. I, I mean, if someone asks, of course, I'll tell them like, yeah, I, I play, uh, I'm a voice actress. I, I play Connie on Steven Universe. Um, but um, it's not really like, it's, it doesn't really come up in conversation most of the time. So I, tr uh, so when I first got to college, um, it was really funny. One of the first, m one of my best friends that I made in my freshman year, um, we were having a conversation. She's like, you, you know, you speak really well. You enunciate. I, I sometimes I feel like I've heard your voice before, and I was like, "Oh, um, that, that's funny. Um, you you might have possibly. Um, I, I I'm a voiceover actor." She was like, "What? What? Oh, oh my gosh, you're so LA." <laughs> um, uh, and so. Um, that's pretty cool. And so it, it, around like maybe a month or two into going to college, it kind of became like the talk of like my dorm floor. Like I'd like walk by and it would be like, oh, there goes child actress Grace Rolex. <laughs> and it was just like a big running joke. Um, because I mean, like I'm pretty like humble about it, I guess. Like I try not to let it get to my head. Um, so it, it's kind of more of like a fun little thing between my friends, but it was really funny one time actually. Um, one of my, I, like my group of friends was like hanging out with someone and I wasn't there and they, and I guess this person like didn't know that um, I was friends with them and was like, did you, do you, do you guys know that the voice of Connie from Steven Universe goes here? And I, um, and they were like, what? That's crazy. And like told me about it later and was like, they're crazy. There was this guy who was like totally like fangirling. It was so crazy. And I was like, what? Oh my God. So um, that was, that was pretty cool. That's probably the, the funniest experience that's happened to me about that. And my second question is, did you happen to meet Nicki Minaj while she was recording? Oh, I wish. <laughs> um, I mean, I, yeah, I, I wish. That's all, that's all, I, all I can say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, I have Hello. Like, three questions, actually. No worries. Um, I know that you can't give us spoilers, but do the other cast members ever give you spoilers? Like, say that you go in and then an episode um, before hadn't aired? I mean, sometimes when I'm recording, um, and, like, because sometimes, because, like, I, I mean, as you guys, as, it's apparent already, um, that um, uh, Connie will not be in episodes for a period of time. And so sometimes I'll go in and a big plot twist has occurred and I'll be like, wait, what's going on? Like, please it, fill me in so I know how to like react to this. Mm -hmm. And so uh, sometimes Rebecca or Ken or any of the writers will um, kind of like tell me what happened. And so I like 
know what's going on at least a little bit. Um, but for the most part, we're all pretty we're all pretty good on um, leaving it as a surprise for ourselves. Okay, and then the second one, um, you said that you were going to college. So what is what's your like side kind of like plan B if you're not able to? I mean, for me, um, I'm an advertising major because I think it's really interesting. Um, I, I'm just, I'm really fascinated by like psychology and I love writing and um, just like graphic design and all that. I just, I have a lot. I, I feel like I'm a jack of all trades sometimes. I'm like, I just have so many interests. I don't know what to do with them all. And so um, I, 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 so I'm mostly studying um Advertise because I wanted the college experience, and I mean, at this point, I mean, obviously, I'm not taking it for granted. But right now, like, it, there was a certain point where my parents were like, "Why do you want to go to college? I mean, like, you're already pretty successful. Why?" Um, so, but I, I'm just I, I love learning. I just wanted to be in an academic environment for a little longer, and um, so. Uh, advertising, yeah, and I mean, I would love to, I, I really enjoy, like, coming up with funny ads, because I like being kind of witty, haha, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so if I, I mean, if, if I ended up s quitting acting, which I don't think is in my plans, um, I, it would probably be going into something in the creative side of advertising, yeah. And the final question, because you said you were like couch potato, and then you also said you like writing. Do you ever write or read like Steven Universe fan fiction and just kind of go, <laughs> I wish or I hope? Um, I don't write Steven Universe fan fiction, but I have looked at it before, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how can you, I mean, like, of, I, like I'm curious I'm like well like I want to get to know like my fans like like or like the fans of the show I feel really weird whenever I say my fans I'm like my fans <laughs> um but um so I usually I'm just like fans of Steven Universe in general um